Tiger Tank 1 2, however you call me, I don't really care. Welcome back to World of Tanks, where we are today taking a look at the T34 1. And my personal reserves just vanished, but I still have about 4,000 of them, so yeah, don't worry too much about it. T34 1, it is a Chinese tier 7 medium tank that is highly controversial because a lot of players either hate it or they dislike it a lot. <laughs> <laughs> I have not met a single player who actually enjoys this tank. I enjoy it, I like it, but this tank has several things that make it a bit special. The stock configuration is atrocious, it doesn't carry a lot of shells, only 34, and overall it just feels a bit lackluster in what it's supposed to be doing. I don't really think, uh, or I don't even know what the tank is supposed to be. They're calling it a versatile medium tank. I enjoy it a lot because of the 100mm gun. I can do very well with this tank. And somehow I think the buffs made the tank better. But there are still a lot of things that are not very enjoyable when you're playing this vehicle and you don't really know what to do with it. Because the gun is not very reliable, the penetration is okay, you don't have a lot of shells. The mobility is decent, but it's not the best. Uh, doesn't have a lot of spotting. The armor is okay in a hold down position, but out there in a in a fight, it's not going to hold up. So there are a lot of things going on with the T34-1, and even with the uh, successor afterwards, uh, version 2. And I understand why players dislike it. So let's take a quick look at the stock configuration. You cannot go past the tracks. You need to get the tracks first if you want to get the 100mm gun. And what I would kind of recommend is go for the 100mm gun first. Get the tracks, get the turret, get the 100mm gun. It's going to cost you about 37,000 experience, which is quite a lot. And then go for just the engine. Have one of the engines, the other one just has 20 horsepower more. So this engine you already have on a Type 58. And I think if you use that, it should be good enough. Put a turbo on it and you don't even have to go for this engine. You can just save the 16k. Go for the T34-2 if you really want to get it as fast as possible. Other than that, you can go for the engine. But basically, you want to go for the gun. You want to have the tracks already and then you can go for the final engine. That's how I would go with the uh, modules. Then I would go further and let's talk a little bit about the vehicle itself. Fully upgraded, this is where I would highly recommend getting a, a good crew or having the crew at least skilled where you have some essentials. For example, you want to have six cents, brothers in arms and a little bit of spotting because the tank doesn't do very well uh, with stock view range. And um, you want to have some equipment on it, but we're going to get to that point in just a second. So first and foremost, 250 alpha damage for a tier 7 medium tank with a 100mm gun is quite decent. It's quite nice. I think you're going to like that. Um, you have three shell types, AP, APCR, and high explosive. And um, basically, you don't really want to go with too much high explosive because there's not a lot of ammunition, only 34 shells. The AP shells have 175 millimeters of penetration, which is decent enough, and 895 meters per second shell velocity. So I don't think you can complain too much about it, but the APCR shells are a very nice step up from the AP shells. You'll get an additional 50 millimeters or even 60 millimeters of penetration with 235, and you have better shell velocity all the way with 1,119 meters per second. So going up against tier eight tanks will be okay. You will be doing okay. You'll not be doing great, but I think you're gonna be doing fine. Now the DPM on the vehicle, um, it is a bit weird because I'm using consumables, um, improved rations. I am using a rammer. This is a bounty rammer that I haven't upgraded yet. So it's still the same, the, the old school rammer, but I would recommend a rammer on the tank. Um, because you want to have the highest rate of fire possible and uh, you can see 8.22 rounds per minute is okay. You can work with that. Gun traverse is great. Gun depression is bad. Just as we uh, have kind of come to realize that this line is not going to get better gun depression. It's only going to get worse. And the aim time and the dispersion are actually okay. The dispersion is a little bit of an issue with this tank, but with field modifications, with crew training, with premium consumables, you can get it down to 0.35. You could also go for um, a different loadout where you go 
with improved aiming. Moving on to survivability, you have 1150 hit points, which is not a lot. And your armor is non-existent on the hull. 60 at the front, 40 on the side, 45 on the side, 40 at the rear. Now you want to hide the lower plate or the hull of the armor because you have 170 on turret. Turret actually does bounce quite a lot of shots, but it has two cupolas that can still be easily penetrated from the front, the side, or um, from behind even. Now, 120 on the side, 60 at the rear. I still think that the armor protection is quite good on a turret and it actually will work in your favor. I have several gameplays where the turret does quite a bit of work. Mobility wise, the tank is actually not too bad. 55 kilometers with a turbo, which I highly recommend. Um, it does weigh a lot, so do not ram tanks. Um, specific power to weight ratio is at 18 if you have the turbo and the field modification, but it should be at 16. Uh, traverse speed is great. You know, reverse speed is also very good. Moving on to concealment, the tank is concealed. Just good enough, I think you can up it even more, and if you want to have a second loadout, you can go for it and just maybe put binos on it if you need it. And um, spotting-wise, the tank is a bit of a disappointment. Um, well, to be fair, for a Chinese tank at tier 7 with 370 meters base view range, it is fine. I'm going to say it is fine, but you want to push it a little bit with at least premium consumables or even with coated optics. I went with coated optics because I like to have more view range. It gives me much, much more kind of peace of mind to know that I can see at least 440 meters far. I went with light alloy mounting points because for me personally, um, to get every little bit I can get out of um, gun traverse or turret traverse and track traverse is really good. And I don't really care too much about the penalties on a damaged gun or ammo rack because usually I repair that or if I am in a situation where I cannot repair my ammo rack and somebody is shooting me, I'm probably going to be dying any anyway, so it's not going to help me too much. And when with improved sight, you know, you want to decrease the aim circle or increase the accuracy. I went with anti-reflective headlights coating to give me more concealment and that's basically all you can choose here. You cannot go for anything else. Then, for the equipment, I went with Turbo, and I think the Turbo is probably a pretty good option. You don't need anything else. You don't need improved rotation mechanism. Um, improved vents is something you can use if you do not want to use a Turbo. Then I went with a Rammer, because I want to get more DPM out of the tank, and Bounty Optics to give me a little bit of a view range advantage. Now, this is a tank that would really benefit from vertical stabilizers but since you're at tier 7 there is no option for you to pick that so you're very limited in the um equipment you can choose so having talked about all of these things what is this tank actually capable of everything just sounds like mediocre and the tank itself is actually kind of mediocre but but if you start playing this tank and you notice that you know you can start shooting tanks and you can get into positions where the enemy just somehow kind of ignores you <laughs> you can do a lot of damage um somehow enemy tanks just they they don't think you're a, a threat and in the end you end up with two uh, three thousand damage or something like that um has happened quite a few times and uh, we're gonna just jump into the two gameplays i've prepared and then we're gonna have final verdict on the vehicle i have two games that i want to show you the first one i want to show off the turret armor and the, capa uh, the capability um, of the T-34-1 with a map that is kind of anti um, no gun depression so how you can deal with it and uh, the limitations of the vehicle but also the very great strength that this vehicle does co um, contain and the second game I just want to show you how good the tank really can be. So, we're playing on Fjords and we get the very early bird, which is KB1S and uh, M2Y that are trying to go down south. Unfortunately, as you could see right there, the accuracy does leave quite a few things to be desired sometimes. Um, we missed a 
completely aimed in shot on the KV-1's backside. But because we put everything we could into um, accuracy on the vehicle and into spotting, we are actually getting some damage and some assistance in here as well. Because artillery is doing damage, we have the guys in the middle that are doing damage, and that's just one of the really important things whenever you play World Tanks, that you should not ignore the assistance damage that you do rack up by basically just spotting something. We perma spotted the Burrask and we got over a thousand spotting or assistance damage with the Burrask right there. This is a position that is very important and that you should definitely control, just so you know. Even in tanks that are maybe not ideal for this position, you should still keep an eye on this um, place on certain maps um, because these places need to be contested. If they are not contested, you're going to reduce your chances of winning quite drastically. And for Fjords, this is one of the key areas. It's not the only place that you have to play, but it's one of the main places that needs to be contested or else your team is going to have a very bad time either up north or south. So one of the main problems with the tank is just that the aim time still takes a bit longer than the majority of other tier 7 vehicles you have. You don't have any vertical stabilizer which would make things a lot easier. Um, so you have to rely on the, well, your crew skills and basically other equipment pieces you can put on. But as soon as you go a bit closer, the gun usually does work quite fine, but your armor is going to suffer. We do not want to go into a DPM, you know, fight with a T44-100, but if you have to, you can still at least put a couple of shots in. You're not going to win against the T44-100 because it's a tier 8, but you're still going to be fairly competitive, um, at least in, in most of my um, encounters I have witnessed. So, so far we're almost at 4,000 combined damage and um, using the binoculars or the vents, no not vents, the coated optics and sitting next to that position where we were able to spot the Burrask really did give us a massive damage boost uh, because by just shooting these targets we were never really able to go more than 2,000 damage because the DPM is okay but it's not good enough to boost you to areas where you can do like easily 3k damage it does take quite a bit of work and also the alpha damage is just not high enough for you to get like that kind of return that you need so one of the main things is just that the gun depression is not very good the turret is sturdy enough that it does work a lot of the times um, but the gun depression is just one of those things that you really have to keep in mind um, on that place, because they were far enough away, we didn't really have any issues shooting them. But if somebody was really close by and just like below us, uh, we would have had a very bad time. Right there you could see we had to really go over the ridgeline to be able to shoot this T-78. But we managed to, to at least hit him. And um, in the end, right here, our Type 62 Chinese brother uh, Ram kills the um, dirty capitalist. Hellcat and um, also opens fire on the on the dirty British uh, colonizers. So no, <laughs> just just kidding. But um, yeah, the tank itself, I think, is it is a decent all rounder nowadays. I think really um, a lot of players hated it, uh, have never given it a second chance. But I think maybe it's time for you to go back and look at it again with the real the right equipment. It sounds really burned outside, uh, no, sounds, it smells really burned outside. But we're gonna move on to the other game point. Then I'm gonna check if my burning, uh, if my building is on fire. Um, you know, priorities first. So let's move on over to the second game. Another game versus tier eight tanks, but majority of the vehicles are still tier sevens. This is a map that really doesn't have any place for vehicles that don't have any gun depression. Um, Either you stay at the back of the map or you go to the A, B, C, 3 area where you have some even ground. But if you go to the middle without gun depression, that's kind of suicidal, isn't it? Well, turns out I don't know anything 
about this game, and I usually go to places that I have no place to be in um, on paper because it shouldn't work, but it does work. I tell you guys, theory does not always go over into praxis. practice. Does that make sense? Well, yeah, probably makes sense. Um, because this is a map where in the middle you need some gun depression to be able to work it, but I think that even with five degrees of gun depression you still are able to deal damage here and um, do quite a bit of work. That is why I think it's so important to have optics or to be able to spot for yourself because you're going to be in positions where you're going to be you know, spotting these tanks for yourself and you'll have to work with what you have. And in that case, it's 5 degrees of gun depression. Now, if I had 10 degrees of gun depression, I would not have any issues um, spotting these guys over there. But look at that. Like, our turret actually is quite sturdy. We bounce the VTU, we bounce the VZ, and we're just spotting these guys uh, while they're crossing. And we're just waiting. We're not overextending. We're not going on top of the ridge line. That is something I do see a lot of times. You do not have to go on top of the ridge line to do damage because what you want to do is right that um it looks like mao also kind of um takes over certain shells and um does damage for you because i didn't aim that one particularly well but it's important that you have someone in the middle because this part of the map is essential if you have nobody here they're just going to be able to put pressure on uh, anything back at base and um they can basically just shoot anything that is down south or even on the north. That is why I like to play this position, even in a tank that is maybe not suited for it. But one of the main things is that you want to keep your HP as well as possible. There's no artillery, so we're not going to have any unpleasant surprises. We can utilize the armor on our turret without any issues, and we can also spot for our team. You can see at the back of the map there is an entire gathering of church goers of the tank destroyer church and they're all sitting on those ridge lines uh, just waiting for these um, idiots to move on up onto the ridge line to annihilate them and that's exactly what we're trying to do right here we don't have the gun depression to just shoot them we have to work with a little bit of um, wall magic that's why I'm constantly hugging this wall to see if I can actually elevate myself a little bit sometimes it works most of the times it doesn't um, but this and the T25 skull shell are the first rounds that actually managed to do damage to us 1150 HP is not it's not the most um, but it should do well enough um, it should give you enough HP to survive um, quite a bit of a battering at tier 7. Unfortunately, one of the main downsides for this tank is just that the aim time really takes a while. With vertical stabilizers, I think this tank would be really, really good. Um, I think it would be kind of one of my favorite tier 7 medium tanks. Um, but without vertical stabilizers, it makes the vehicle a bit... just makes everything harder to, um, to work out. Uh, we get penetrated again by the T25-2. Um, obviously, it's not impossible to go through this tank, but it's not very easy if you do not hit the weak spots. I think a majority of the player base just thinks, well, the turret is quite bad, it used to be very easy to go through this tank, and they just don't have any respect for this vehicle. And that is a very, very bad thing to have, to have no respect for a specific tank, because that tank is going to just do damage to you on a constant basis so right now we're in a position where things are not looking very well we're all by ourselves in the middle they're about to push the south everyone is in a defensive shape where it's like pure chaos back there but they just managed to knock out two tanks we're pushing the heavy tank line but we're losing tanks that are coming around the corner Everything kind of looks okay at the moment, but things do turn sour very quickly. We lose the M41 Walker Bulldog. We have two more or three more tanks um, on the, the corner. And now an ISU-152 is behind us and we have a Panther coming in. Uh, for me right now, it's important that I do not get into an engagement where I can be fired upon from several directions. Um, a crossfire is the worst thing that could happen to me. But... 
Uh, I'm hoping that my guys in the um, in the base they manage to do something. We just lose our T25-2, um, unfortunately, to drowning, and we lose the VK, who managed to come into the middle to help me out. So things turn very, very quickly around again, and now we need the help of our assistants uh, or the guys at the back to knock out this 122TM. We get the assistance damage, the IC-152 takes care of him, and now we finally can focus on this Panther. This is the opponent you have, the same tier opponent at tier 7, um, that you actually are going up against, and you can see if you're hull down, things are actually quite good. He's not going to be able to penetrate you in hull down, even with premium APCR shells. It's quite difficult. This turret is really sturdy. And I just think, you know, it's nothing special. This tank is not special. The gun is not special. It's not like great. It uh, doesn't do massive amounts of damage. But, you know, as you could see, we are now at uh, 4,000 damage combined. Um, and we didn't really do a lot, uh, except for shooting tanks. Now, the gun depression is probably the biggest downside to the tank. Gun depression and the accuracy. But I think it still works out just fine enough. Uh, if you have a little bit of patience and if you are willing to give up certain things. Um, for example, you know, you have to invest quite a lot of resources into the equipment and the training. Uh, maybe even premium consumables, but it makes the tank so much better. I didn't have to dip into any gold shells. In all of the games I've played so far, I haven't shot a single gold shell. Um, because the 175 millimeters of penetration have been enough, even in tier 8 matches. Uh, you just need to have a will. Where there's a will, there's a way. Um, because I'm also broke. I have 120,000 credits to my name currently in the channel or in my World Tanks account because I bought this tank. Um, it was a 1.4 million credits and I actually enjoy this tank, so I'm going to free market in the future. Um, but I think it's a really neat vehicle, and the buffs have certainly helped it out. You can see right there, I was a bit upset that I didn't hit that, because are we going to be able to survive that? Thankfully, we don't have to, because our bigger brother just nukes him out of existence. I say thank you, and now we have one remaining vehicle to fight. This tank is underestimated. Um, actually, I fired a premium shell because I ran out of AP, shell, AP shells. And if you only use premium shells, you're going to have no issue with this tank, I can tell you that much. So if you're like a, not a free-to-play player, you can basically um, be a really annoying, toxic, little uh, gold-spamming um, guy. But either way, I really like this tank, I enjoy it a lot, and I understand why players dislike it, because they have had a very bad experience with it back in the days. Can I say that it has improved like by massive margins? No, it hasn't. Um, it has gotten a little bit better, it has more HP, it has, I think, better gun handling, but it still isn't as, as good as you would expect or want it to be. But I think it's just fine. It's a balanced tank. It's a tank that um, works uh, at tier 7, tier 8, even tier 9 sometimes. And I just think that, you know, isn't that a good thing that we have some balanced tanks in World of Tanks? I enjoy this one a lot. I enjoy the Chinese medium tanks. I don't know why. The gun depression should be an absolute deal breaker for me because I usually prefer gun depression, but they somehow just work. Um, it has to do with the fact that you have to learn how to play these tanks. You need to get like into the mindset of a Chinese tanker who cannot aim his gun down anywhere. So he has to know that how to use or how to get additional gun depression by either going up against a mountain, against a rock, whatever, or by going to places where you wouldn't go normally in a medium tank that has hull down armor. But still, we managed to do quite fine. I've played about 10 games and I still remember how to play the tank. I still enjoy it quite a lot. And um, yeah, I, I hope you guys did like this review. Um, I think the skin looks, it looks quite nice here. This is going to be the screenshot for um, the thumbnail. Just gonna do it like that real quick. And then we're going to end this video. So hope you guys did enjoy. As always, comment, like, and subscribe. And I'll see you guys on the next video. Until then, uh, we're going to be covering the next Chinese medium tank, which is the T-34-2, which I thankfully still have in my garage. Um, but either way, I hope you guys have a nice weekend. I'll see you guys on the next one. Until then, see you later.